Our next speaker is Maria Casanova Aceves. Um, and Maria recently completed her postdoc in Miriam Murad's lab at the ICANN School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. And she's an incoming junior PI at the Centro Nacional de Investigaciones Oncológicas in Madrid. Um, she's fascinated by the role of innate cells in homeostasis and in early initiation of tissue pathogenesis. And in her lab, she's aiming to understand the contribution of myeloid cells to metastasis initiation and progression in humans and murine models. Um, and the title of her talk today is going to be Lineage Tracing Reveals the Pro-Tumorigenic Niche Role of Tissue Resident Macrophages in Early Lung Cancer Lesions. Oh, thank you very much uh, for the nice introduction, Stacy. And I'd like to uh, uh, acknowledge the organizers, organizers for the nice invitation. So today I'm gonna tell you about uh, the work I developed as a postdoc uh, in, in Dr. Mian's Moral Lab. And I hope I, uh, I'm able to convince you that macrophages and to study macrophages in different disease scenarios, because really the future of cancer, I think is pretty myeloid. Um, let me see, right? Okay. So as you may know, uh, Elin Menikov established uh, looking by a very rudimentary uh, microscope that macrophages are very potent at phagocytosis. And one degree that uh, of plasticity of these cells is related to the food that we eat. They might eat uh, neutrophils, apoptotic neutrophils in the steady state that they die on a daily basis and they turn on a program of tolerogenic signals. But in other scenarios where uh, tissue damage occurs, uh, they might, like for example, uh, a tumor is starting to, to proliferate, um, they might induce a more immunomodulatory uh, program. And as Ananda was uh, describing uh, early on this morning, uh, these are the most heterogeneous subset of myeloid cells. And this uh, degree of, ter of heterogeneity is also uh, achieved by the signals that these macrophages uh, receive and uh, decode when they reside in the tissue. And importantly, and you will see it now uh, during my talk, uh, another degree of uh, uh, plasticity in these cells is turned on by their developmental program. There's a population of macrophages that we have uh, long studied uh, using murine models and in its tracing tools that is long lived and is the tissue resident macrophage lineage versus the other uh, compartment that arises from bone marrow hematopoiesis, which is a transiting or sorted macrophage. So all these uh, layers of uh, complexity imprint plasticity in the macrophage lineage. And as you may know, tumor-associated macrophages have been longly studied in tumor biology and have been related to many functions such as immune suppression, growth, angiogenesis, and, and even uh, more recently metastasis. But something that the field has missed is how these uh, macrophage populations changes over time and how these different compartments may play a role at different moments uh, longitudinally into during tumor progression. And importantly, uh, when it comes to the study of this population of cells in humans, uh, mostly of the, most of the studies have focused on this paradigm that is N1 and N2. And uh, with the advent of uh, single cell technologies, what we have noticed is that really indeed these polar, polarizing streams do not exist and do not recapitulate the function of macrophage in vivo. As I mentioned uh, to you before, uh, this macrophage uh, definition has remained largely incomplete because the tissue of resident macrophage has longly been ignored. Uh, so uh, my project was uh, what we have, this project started almost five years ago, uh, was raising the hypothesis that maybe macrophages of different lineage indeed what they will do is modulate differently uh, anti-tumor immunity. And we decided to focus on non-small cell lung cancer because uh, it's not only one of the cancers that causes more uh, deadly, uh, more deaths worldwide, it's also, uh, it offers the opportunity to study the lung in a disease scenario and with a better scenario of studying these uh, two different compartments. A uh, compartment of embryonic macrophages that are the tissue, tissue resident macrophages or alveolar macrophages in the lung and the interstitial macrophages or more mac macrophages that arises from adult hematopoiesis. We decided to focus on this question also because we believe that when we expand this uh, kind of analysis in other tumors, or uh, in other organs, we would be able to better 
uh, design uh, immunotherapies for uh, macrophages beyond anti CSF1 receptor blocking. So in order to analyze this question, we utilized two different models. Uh, the first one was uh, injecting uh, KP cells that are KRAS and P53 mutated, and that we have also engineered to express TFP so that we can follow the progression and the growth of the tumor. And we also analyzed the macrophage compartment in small cell and cancer uh, patients of stage one that harbor the same mutations as uh, the KP cells. So in order to analyze this, we took an unbiased approach and we utilized single cell RNA-seq to get the most of the heterogeneity of the phenotypes we didn't want to find to kind of select previously any kind of the populations before using the 10X platform. So what we found is that uh, when we analyze either non-small cell lung cancer uh, patients, in either the normal or the tissue, that uh, harbor the tumor, we observe four different groups of cells, let's say. And here where I'm showing you is a heat map in which you can see here in the columns, the cells, but also in the Y axis, the genes that are differentially expressed in among the different clusters of cells. And this work was uh, done uh, in close collaboration with a fantastic graduate student, Andrew Leder in, in Miriam's lab. So as I was mentioning to you, uh, we studied also uh, mice lesions of KP. It was very striking because regardless of the differences between the species, we found the same uh, clusters of, of cells. Of course, these cluster of cells were not comparable on a single cell basis, but we observed that some of the genes were indeed preserved. And for the sake of time, I'm gonna focus only on the macrophage compartments. So as I was mentioning to you, in order to try to identify uh, commonalities between the two different species, we took advantage. Uh, we took an approach. In order, we took an approach uh, to analyze the, the set of genes that were indeed preserved, the preserved despite the, the clear error evidences, and this consisted uh, with the recent findings from. And Pitet's lab that have found that also macrophages are uh, really not conserved between the different species. But what we observe is that when we analyze both the species, we were able to identify that some canonical genes, such as MRC1, also known as CD206, CIG1, CD169, and Marco and PPR gamma, were conserved and uh, highly enriched for these. Um, kind of tissue resident macrophage compartment. And we were able to say baptize this, uh, uh, this cluster as tissue resident macrophages because we also observed some uh, proliferating uh, set of genes in this self-maintaining uh, population, both in mouse and in human. So, uh, but however, in order to uh, say in a bona fide, uh, as a bona fide way, uh, if this population of cells uh, are really tissue resident macrophages, we need to do an experiment that related that require phase mapping. So for that, uh, we collaborated with Boris Graces, and a couple of years ago, Boris developed a mouse model that, uh, upon tamoxifen injection, it allows to track cells that derive only. Uh, from bone marrow and metopoiesis. So um, upon tamoxifen, tamoxifen injection in these mice, MAP17 gene is recombined and it allows the turn on of the tomato uh, fluorescent protein. So only cells that derive from adult hematopoiesis will be turned red, whereas cells that are, that are from embryonic origin won't, won't never see, will never express this gene. So indeed, what we observe is that in the steady state, that was the case, cells which are canonically derived from bone marrow hematopoiesis were efficiently uh, incorporating uh, the expression of TD tomato, whereas in the lung, in the steady state, we observe that there is a population that barely become um, labeled with uh, TD tomato. And as you can see here, using CD206 as also a marker of uh, this population, we observe that bone marrow derived cells red, whereas others uh, did not, indicating their uh, embryonic origin. So in order to uh, analyze this question, because uh, the prevailing dogma is that macrophages in the tumors were all derived from bone marrow derived cells, we decided to run again this experiment, but using this 
derived model in uh, using MAP17, in which we injected our tumor cell lines, and then we uh, separated the fraction of TB tomato negative and TB tomato positive, and uh, send them to single cell RNA so what we observed indeed, it, it was like in the KP tumors, there was a population of cells that again, similar to what we observed in uh, naive lungs, they barely become labeled, whereas the other populations of cells um, uh, uh, become red, indicating that the majority of these ones had like um, a bone marrow derived uh, origin. Importantly, when we analyze the distribution of these uh, sets of uh, cells, both in mice and in human, what we observed, it was a significant uh, decrease in uh, the tissue resident compartment that uh, inversely correlated with an expansion of this uh, MOMAX compartment. So uh, one of the things that is uh, really cool about the single cell technology is that it allows you to really dig in into the uh, transcriptional profile of these different cluster of cells that I'm talking to you, that I'm mentioning to you. So what we notice is that this tissue resident compartment express uh, high levels of C169, also known as Siglet1, and MRC1. So uh, we could also generate a mouse model, C169 created a tomato that allows identification together with CD206 of this tissue resident compartment. So once we have uh, analyzed and identified how can we uh, how can we track this population, we decide to uh, prove uh, prove its function in the genome microenvironment. Uh, and uh, we uh, decided to do that in a longitudinal manner because we reasoned that when we were analyzing these over tumors, somehow these tumors become um, excluded from the tumor lesions, as you can see. So. Uh, as you can see, we analyze this and uh, the progression of the tumor longitudinally. And what we observe is that as long as the tumor cells, uh, uh, as long as the tumor grows, this population of tissue resident macrophages become sequentially excluded. And not only that, we also observe that these early interactions that KP cells only day five and uh, after the injection of the tumor cells, they establish close contacts with, um, with this tissue resident compartment. This uh, was true also for uh, a KP genetic engineer model generated in the lab of Tyler Jacks. And it was also true in non-small cell lung cancer lesions in humans, where we could only analyze this uh, kind of distribution at later stages, uh, but of course not uh, at very beginning. So um, in order to understand how these early interactions maybe will be uh, promoting uh, any functional change in the tumor cells, uh, we decide to perform bulk RNA-seq to have like a more complete uh, transcriptome profile of this tissue resident compartment. So what we do it here is we isolate this tissue resident compartment at early stages when there are very few foci of these uh, tumor uh, cells. And what we observe is at these early stages, uh, the tissue resident uh, macrophage compartment acquire a signature um, that reflects an increased peptide and antigen binding here, as you can see by the increased expression of class two molecules, but also uh, a lot of metallo and the peptidase uh, become activated. So somehow suggesting that maybe these macrophages, they are acquiring like a more um, pro-remodeling uh, program. So to test this uh, functionally, uh, what we did is just, we came back to a more reductionist approach and what we did here is uh, we put in co-culture in, co in three-dimension three using material KP cells together with uh, tissue resident macrophages isolated from the tumor or these bone marrow, uh, these more macrophages isolated from the tumor. And what we observe is that when we follow how this uh, this spheroids grow, we observe that the, over time, over six days, that the invasive area that these uh, spheroids, oh, sorry, uh, my headphones are oh, without battery. Sorry for that. Uh, sorry. Mm. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. okay, thank you. So 
what we notice here is that when we culture these spheroids together with tissue resident macrophages, we observe that the total invasive area over time uh, was uh, significantly increased when we culture them together with these tissue resident macrophages. So this uh, point us to the idea that maybe these macrophages indeed what they were inducing by the contact with these uh, spheroids is, uh, was a uh, pro-invasive phenotype. And indeed, uh, what we observe is that when we culture these uh, spheroids together with, uh, 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 with tissue resident macrophages, we observe a significant uh, regulation of ecaderin, a dismantling of ecaderin junctions in the spheroids that did not happen when we were culturing them together with um, more macrophages. Importantly, we also observe that these spheroids acquire like somehow more invasive area. Uh, and that was not the case when we were culturing them with tissue resident uh, MOMAC, with tissue uh, MOMAX. Uh, as, uh, so you hear in this video, as you can see, these are all tissue resident macrophages. This is spheroid, and you can see this spheroid uh, starts to form like kind of an invasive front. And even more importantly, there are some of these macrophages that interact with these tumor cells, and eventually these tumor cells will generate a new. Um, a new spheroid. Um, it's uh, important to say that we did not detect phagocytosis of the tumor cells uh, in this study. So, um, but it was not only happening in vitro. Uh, measuring ENT in vivo is kind of challenging, so we have we spent a lot of time optimizing this experiment. But what we observe is that when we get rid of these tissue resident macrophages using CD169 DDR mice, this is a mice in which uh, upon diphtheria toxin installation in the trachea, you can get rid of the tissue resident compartment. What we observe is that very early when these tumor cells seed the lung, we observe that in the absence of these tissue resident macrophages, these um, tumor cells fail to express canonical markers, canonical transcription factors, which are involved in turning on the mesenchymal effect. So uh, these cells don't regulate the expression of TWIS1 and also CEB1. So again, further suggesting that not only in vitro, but in vivo, these resident macrophages at very early stages uh, drive invasion and metastasis growth in the, within the lungs. Um, this, of course, uh, what it happens at later stages is that the, uh, the tumor burden that we observed in CD169 DTR was uh, significantly reduced. And also some of the uh, some of the findings that I observed when I was doing a lot of imaging in the lung and how this tumor early tumor microenvironment was uh, shaped by this population is that I noticed uh, that this tissue resident uh, macrophage established very close contact with regulatory T cells, like somehow forming like kind of a menace trap between these tissue resident macrophages. You can see here, this initiating early uh, growing tumor and this uh, early, early uh, infiltrating T-Rex. So I become interested in, in this finding. And what we observe is that in this KP model, we observe like as long as the tumor progresses, of course, there is an accumulation of uh, regulatory T cells in the lung, as it's seen many, many models, but also that these T cells, they are early expanding at early, uh, at very early time points. However, when we get rid of these tissue resident macrophages, again, using CD169 DTR, we observe a significant and drastic reduction of the regulatory T cell compartment, but also a reduction in their immune modulatory uh, expression markers such as CD73, CD84, but also in the expression of IL10. So, again, suggesting that these uh, tissue resident macrophages somehow shape and predispose uh, the immune suppressive uh, microenvironment uh, to later on to the wave of MOMAX. Um, also, what we observe in this setting is that at later stages, when this T-Rex has uh, remained reduced, there is a better effect of function and the ratio of regulatory T-cells, uh, the ratio of CD8 T-cells and T-Rex is increased. 
and this goes uh, in uh, for in um, this happens together with a reduction of T-Rex in the tumor microenvironment, which is inversely correlated with a better infiltration of T lymphocytes in the tumor. So suggesting that again, early intervention of this population can really predispose uh, the tumor to, to become uh, uh, hot and infiltrate by tumor cells. And importantly, and this was like somehow the definitive experiment, when we get rid of this uh, tissue resonant compartment at later stages, we did not observe, we did not observe any uh, beneficial effect in tumor burden, neither in the levels of uh, regulatory T cells or uh, the factor function of T cells. This was also not uh, correlated with changes in regulatory T cells in the tumor microenvironment, nor a very infiltration of uh, T cells in the, in, the, in the tissues, in the tumor, sorry. So just to summarize and to make the long story uh, short, what I told you today is that these tissue resident macrophages are the first one that interact with this uh, early sealing tumor cells, and the, this interaction causes uh, EMT program in the tumor cells, but also these uh, tissue resident macrophages span the pool of regulatory uh, T cells, so really setting the stage for immune suppression in the early tumor microenvironment. Uh, I didn't have time to show you, but there is like different waves and the tumors, how these tumors are organized. Uh, it's a matter of time. Uh, these MOMAX uh, normally arise around day 20 in, the, in this uh, model. And more importantly, and somehow that's something that goes against uh, previous observation, these adult monocytes, uh, at least in this model, at least in the lung, uh, cannot give rise uh, to tissue resident macrophages. So this also uh, somehow highlights the idea that we have to understand how these tumors develop over time, but also in a tissue specific manner, because that may not be the case for tumors arising, for example, in the pancreas, uh, where the bone mark compartment is way more uh, expanded. So, um, as I mentioned to you, this tissue resistant macrophage compartment, compartment is mostly, mostly relevant during tumor inception. And how can we transfer uh, these observations into a clinical setting is what we are going to do next. And uh, in my lab, what we are going to aim to uh, to do is how can we design therapies to arti uh, activate this tissue resistant compartment, indeed, to the, uh, reduce their tolerogenic potential. So. With that, I would like to say thank you, of course, to all the members of the Merad Laboratory, but uh, most importantly to Miriam Merad for being a fantastic scientist, a better mentor, and a better woman. And all our collaborators, especially Erika and Julio that really helped cancer biologists, that really helped with the x-ray setting, Effie Kenningsberg that helped a lot together with Andrew uh, for the single cell analysis, and of course, the funding and all of you for listening and studying today before the break. Thank you very much. And I will be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Maria, it was a great talk. Um, there's a couple of questions, which I think we'll try to fit in before the break. Um, one is, is the immunosuppressive and pro-tumorigenic effect of these tissue resident macrophages common to all tissues or other tissues, or do you have any idea if it's, uh, you know, it applies outside the lung? Depending on, the, I mean, uh, the tissue resident compartment, as I mentioned uh, during my talk, it differs really uh, depending on the tissue. The kaffir cells is something that we are exploring now in Merat lab very deep, and I hope in a couple of months you will get to know. <laughs> but uh, let's say that it has not been described so far. Uh, in This is uh, uh, the first study that describes uh, this compartment. Okay, um, and another question, uh, are these uh, TRM, real TRM from uh, EMPs or early replenished ones in the first days post-birth? And do you expect that to make any difference? Uh, this, uh, this, I mean, our uh, fate mapping approach actually highlights the fact that they are really um, non uh, bone marrow derived, but we also did some experiments in which we did the other approach with CXCR1, uh, pre-ER, uh, labeling at 16, with embryos at 16.5 to target fetal liver uh, monocytes, which is the main 
environment that actually give rise to this population of tissue resident microfitis. And indeed, that's, that's the case. This population is a bona fide tissue resident microfitis of embryonic origin. Okay, I think I'll ask one more um, before we take a break. And how do you envision sort of the interaction or the dance of recruited versus resident uh, tumor associated macrophages to promote carcinogenesis? Is it more like time dependent functions or really distinct functions of the two? I mean, uh, they are more distinct functions because indeed uh, the, I mean, the molecules that we know that induce this kind of EMT program that are TF beta, and they are not expressed by this MoMA compartment. Uh, 